Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi there, and welcome to the demonstration I'm going to do on little wallets. But, oh, I am Jackie Erickson. I work here at the Stitching Post. And I want to thank Valerie for letting us do demos during Quilters Affair Week on hold. Today is Quilt Show Day on hold till next year. And I'm the last demo of this uh, week long. So I am going to demo the little wallet. And what this is, it's a pattern by Valerie, by Valerie Wells, and here's the pattern. And I did step outs for this, so I don't have to do any sewing, okay? And the pattern is, explains everything very well, but there are uh, some little tips I can give you along the way. So, so tell me though, really quick, how many of these little wallets have you made, Jackie? Okay, so Valerie asked me how many of these little wallets I have made. I have made thousands of these wallets. The car that I'm driving right now, his name is Wally. And I bought him six years ago. My down payment was what I had made from selling wallets. So, but he's That's getting. That's why she is giving the demo. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's going to get traded in here, hopefully, in the next couple of months. Okay. So we're going to start with to make the wallet. There's a few pieces that you need. You need the inside of the wallet, a piece of interfacing, the outside of the wallet, and three pieces of fabric for your pockets. Pocket one, two, and three. Okay. Now, so we got those pieces. Now we're going to cut the inside of the wallet, the outside of the wallet, and the interfacing the same size. And then we're going to cut our little pockets. So to do the pockets, pull this part a little bit. You take your fabrics, and this is a hint. It doesn't say in the pattern to do it this way, but I like to. I cut the size that I need, then I fold it. Okay, oh, let me get this. And I will press these as I go, show you how this works. Okay, so I can put it right here and I can reach it. Okay, fold, fold, fold the third one. You can come in and watch the demo if you'd like. All right, iron. All three pieces. Oh, this might not be on. <laughs> It's warm enough that it's doing its thing, so it's fine. I'll let it, let it warm up a little bit to use it a little later. Okay, so then I'm going to layer my pockets, the third one in the back, the second one, and then the first one. Okay, that was not a very good press job, but good enough to give you an idea. Okay, now you can cut these all individually if you like, but I want to cut them all at the same time. So I take my template. This one happens to be acrylic. We're in the process of getting some of these made. But meanwhile, you can make one out of template plastic and you can still see through this, see? You wanna be able to see through it and I'll explain that in a minute. But now that I have all three of these pressed, I can actually lay my template right on top of all three of them and cut all three at the same time. So, I now have all of my little pockets ready to roll, okay? And that brings us to the third step. Okay, now this piece of interfacing, I do have to press it onto the outside of my wallet, okay? And I can do that right here with this one. Uh, now, your iron can be relatively hot for this, but you may actually melt your interfacing, so be careful. Don't stay in one place too long. Just glide over it. What type of interface are you using, Jackie? Uh, what type of interface am I using? I am using face, it's um, Sheer Tailor, and I don't know the number of it. It's a heavy 550? 950. 950. Thank you, Valerie. It's 950. That's the number, I not the price. You said it at the last demo. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, my, this is not on, I think I either. Okay, now it's heating up. Doesn't matter, I got one already heated up here. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my background, lay my three pocket pieces on there. I'm gonna take the front of it and lay it right sides together, okay? Then I'm going to pin it. And when you pin it, I pin it in six different places. Well, hey, Hold right here, okay? And I have a yellow pin here. After you've done this a while, you don't need to have a different color pin, but I put a yellow one here because that's no, I know where I'm gonna start to sew it. So when I start to sew it together, where that yellow pin is right here, 
and I did this in black so that you could see the, the sewing on it. Quarter inch seam allowance is what we use. You're going to start where the pin is, back tack, and then go all the way around your wallet. Come around the corner, go about three quarter inches down, back tack. So you leave a nice big opening right there. Because that's how you, get, you need to get your finger in there, turn it inside out. Then you're going to trim it about an eighth of an inch. Try not to cut your corners too close. I did that the last time and my, I popped through my wallet, which by the way, I fixed them all. <laughs> so then it's ready to flip inside out. This can be really tricky. So I'm going to use this one here. No, this one here and turn it inside out. Okay. So open up the seam, the opening. Okay. Stick your index finger down inside of it. Okay. You can actually feel the three pockets. One, two, three, and you can feel them. You can run your finger right up them and you can count them. You want to make sure you get on the outside of that third, the, the first wall, the third one, the pocket, excuse me. Put your finger all the way down into the opposite corner, pinch it with your thumb and forefinger, hold onto it tight, and pull the wallet around your finger and thumb. Okay? And it'll start poking through the opening. Okay? There's my thumb. And then just pull it through. If it's too small, you may not be able to turn it. But if you can get your finger in there, you should be able to. It just might take a while. But that's why you back tack so you don't pull those seams apart. Okay. Pop out the corners. Are you going to talk about fussy cutting? Yes, I will. Because I need to hear it one more time. I will talk about fussy cutting after we go through this whole thing once. <laughs> okay. No, here's the thing. I was, I made, when we were beginning of the quarantine, I made samples. And... Three out of the four of mine were upside down. I actually have them in the back room. <laughs> I could go get the upside down rabbit. Okay. Okay, so I, you can use a chopstick, a knitting needle. Um, this is called a stuff it tool. It's all metal and it's got a little bead on the end of it, which is really nice. And you can poke out the corners. But be careful. If you poke too hard, you'll poke through it. I did that the last time. Right through it. But I made sure that this one wouldn't happen to it. Okay. Now, this is probably the most time-consuming part of the wallet. I take these with me when I get a whole bunch of them done when I go to the movies. And I flip them while I'm in the movie theater. <laughs> Voila. And if I have friends with me, I bring more than one and let them flip too. <laughs> so now we're going to press it. This one's pressed because we want to top stitch this. So we're going to press it. This one is really nice to have a nice hot iron. If you have steam, you can use steam. I don't really need it yet. Okay. You can catch this seam right here when we sew. So make sure it's tucked under when you press it. Okay. And you can see how it's nicely pressed there. Okay. So that's this point. Now we're going to top stitch it. You start at one side. It doesn't matter which side. Back tack. Come around the top of the wallet and it'll close the seam. The seam here is now closed here. And there we go. So now, this is where you want steam. We're going to fold the top down. We're going to fold the top down and press it in place so that we can actually get our snap on there. Adjust the flap where you want it to be. Some people like it really low. Some people like it high. Okay. And then press it. All right. With everybody wearing masks, you can't really tell who they are. <laughs> okay, there we go. And it's, uh, it's not quite, I don't have any steam in there, but um, that'll, if I did, it would hold it down there. Really, this one's got steam. See how it sits in there nicely? I've already marked this one, but I can mark this one. So now we're going to mark our wallet so we can put this snap on it. I just take it over any cutting mat, ruler, it doesn't matter. And I actually center it over some lines. It, does, it doesn't have to say one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter. You just need lines. So here is the center right here. I'm going to take a pin, run up my wallet to about where I want the snap to be. And that's about a half inch from the end. Okay. See in there. Then I'm going to take a black Sharpie 
and mark the top and underneath where the pin's sticking through. Then you can pull the pin out. Now it's marked to put the snap on. Okay, this is the finished one with the snap on there. The second half of the demo is the snap setter. Okay, but before we get to that, <clears throat> let's talk about picking fabric. So, when I pick fabric for the little wallets, I like cutesy stuff, or not necessarily cutesy, but something that you, that's small enough that it looks good while it's on the front of the wallet, and the, I, the focal point is the front of your wallet. This is great little fabric. I use this a lot. One, oh, I just went through and picked up some fabrics off the floor. I pulled some fat quarters here so we can take a look at them. So, this is the Lima Bean by um, Martha Nagley. And I thought it'd be really cute on the outside. And then this would be the inside and the front, the first flap, the first uh, um, mm -hmm. pocket, okay? So that goes together. That probably will cabbage be. Cabbage and lima beans. Cabbage and lima beans. Mm -hmm. Is that cap? Yeah, I guess yeah. that is cabbage. That's her cabbage. So I thought that was cute. Now this is a line by Valerie. And I really like the sunflower. I might, we didn't have a blue. Otherwise, because uh, she's out of that one, the blue that went with it, I really liked it but that would be the outside. Now that I get it in here, I don't really like the green. Although it does go with it, but there's not a whole lot of contrast. I have some of that blue at home. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> okay, and this is another Valerie. And I love this for the wallet because there's all kinds of places. If you use your little template, we'll use this one here. I'm not sure what I do with the other one. But you can actually see, oh, thanks. You can see through it and you can see where your flap here, about to here, which would be your focal fabric. And you can move it however you want. If you want more flowers, then you can do that. You can actually, it doesn't have to be on the grain. You can move it any direction you want. Okay, then I pulled some bananas. <laughs> you can get bananas in there. Be cute. Pulled a lemur. And this is directional. So I'll explain directional to you in a minute. And I like that with the green. It kind of picks up his eyes. I should be flipping around so you can see it. Pick up his eyes. And then I did more bananas. We had done banana wallets before and they were pretty popular. Okay, so now here's one of my all-time favorite wallets. I love this little wallet. Okay, and I'm actually in the process of, process of making more kits. Becky's back there folding them right now. <laughs> so we do sell kits and they come packaged like this. They're $4.50 and what's inside the kit the pattern's not there. You can purchase that separately. But, and the pattern is $3. And here's the pattern again. Okay, so in the kit is two fat eighth yard cuts. So that's what this is right here. Okay? A piece of interfacing and a sew-on snap. We're going to talk about uh, the other snaps in a minute. Um, but we put the sew-on snap in there so you have something that you can actually close your wallet with because we don't know if everybody has a snap setter. So you get this. And they're basically about the same price, so. And that's how I made the pattern, so that's why it's in there, too. Because <laughs> I made the pattern with normal snaps. I didn't have, Jackie had to teach me the snap setter stuff. <laughs> so yeah, Val was talking about how she, that I had to teach her how to use a snap setter. What I should have done was taught her how to cut the fabric the correct direction. OK, yes. so <laughs> with that in mind, so we want to get our lizard to go you know what you can't cut the lizard he can he'd be fine either way wouldn't matter but in this case these women would not be fine if they were upside down but he'll be fine so what we're going to do is i'm going to take and this is the kit so you can get a lizard at least one small lizard on here it's hard to see with your template, with your oh, template. Can you okay the other template? You do with it? right here okay. okay there we go My, yeah all right so with this template you can see the lizard through there so this works great and I would just cut this out if I wanted that lizard. Now I could use this one here too. Then I would turn this this way. If I did it this way, which I've done, trust me, my wallet's missing. There's no, not enough here. And I've done that. Then it makes me mad because it's the only piece I had. You, the whole entire template has to be on the piece of fabric. So there, leave yourself a good quarter inch down and around your motif so that you don't lose him in the seam allowance like this one here. Then you can also, what I did here on the inside, I also did a big lizard on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> so after you cut, now I would cut this little lizard here because I 
great. I didn't waste a whole lot of fabric. Then I can go over here and this lizard, let me turn it around, because now this is the back of it. That would be this here. Mm -hmm. So I could get that lizard in there. See? So now I've used this little piece here, this piece here, and I still have enough here for one of the pockets. And it, usually the middle pocket is what it'll be. Like in here. So that's the middle pocket. Mm -hmm. And then whatever your second piece is, which is the green, will be the other two pockets. Okay? So that's how you use the kit. There's plenty of fabric for one wallet. Plenty, plenty. And then again, your piece of interfacing is so that you have that interfacing that I always put on the front flap. It just, it's more stable and it just makes your wallet uh, more, it's uh, steady, sturdier, okay? And then when you get it all done, you can sew the snap on. Or you can do a snap setter, which we are going to do. Move that, put that back there. Your pockets before you cut them out with the template are six by nine? No, on the back of the pattern, yeah. uh, she's asking about where the how what size to cut the pockets. It does tell you what size to cut those. It is well, it tells you to cut it on the fold. But if you measure this, if you measure this, it would be a five inch by six inch piece. This would be a five and three quarter inch by six inch, and pocket three would be six and a half inch by six inch, and then you fold those. Or you fold your fabric and cut it. It doesn't have the, the, the dimensions for cutting a big piece like I did. It just says to cut it on the fold. So I just wanted to make it easier for me. I try to make all patterns easier for me. <laughs> yeah, we like easy. Okay, so we are going to do the snap setter now. All right, and I don't need this. Okay, so we'll bring out some wallets, some little birdies now. Mine this one, gotten mine from Olivia. I wonder if she, she kiped it. it. Ah. I gave a wallet to Olivia to give to her mom, and she hasn't received it yet. Okay, well, that one's a little off there, but you won't look at that. Ignore that. Ignore it. Okay. All right, so we're going to put snaps on. One of these has a bunch of, here we go. I've already got all my things set aside here. That's my snaps. Okay, so we are out of snap setters right now, but they have been ordered. They're coming in next week. So you can order them online. Uh, yeah, but that's cool. I'm very happy to be out of them at this point. So what the snap setter is, it comes in three pieces. It comes with a base, a middle, and a top. And then there's an adapter. This is the adapter. The snap setter is size 16, okay? All of this little hardware is size 16, but the snap is a size 18. That's why the adapter is a size 18, okay? Very important. You can get size 16 snaps, we just don't carry them, okay? So if you already have this little purple guy, and a lot of people do, you will need the adapter to, uh, you can get half your wallet done, but you need this to do the pearls, okay? And on the back of the, so these are the pearl buttons that we have, snaps. And on the back of these, it has the directions on how to pair up your little pieces. So each half needs teeth, okay? And then each half, one needs, this is a stud. Each half needs a stud or, I can't remember what the, that one's called. That one is a, a socket, okay, and a socket. So the socket goes with the pearl, and the stud goes with the plain ring, okay? So we're going to, kind of got that, I'll go over that again. So now we need to mark our little wallet. I showed you earlier how to mark it, we'll do it again. The green's almost the same color as this map, but I happen to like that map. So again, I, I center it, then I follow my pin up until where I want, everyone wants that to be. Oh, hey, I already, this marked. This is marked already, there. And there, yay, okay. Again, I use a black Sharpie to do that. If you're using dark fabric, a silver Sharpie works great too. Okay, so we're gonna start with the bottom. And we have our little ring that goes in here. And you can set it in there. And then we have our snap, or excuse me, our yeah, pearl snap that goes in the adapter. Now this, um, I'll cover that in a second. So we're gonna start with the, the flat ring. 
slide it under the first pocket, okay, under the first pocket, center it around that dot and push it through. And you can see the teeth, mm -hmm. okay? Hold on to it on a flat surface, very important. If you try to do it like this, it's not gonna work, okay? Lay it on the hard surface and then drop the little ring into that well. I don't know if you can see that, okay? And then hold on to it. And you can still see the teeth coming up. The second piece goes on top and this little anchor over here holds everything in place, which is really nice. Okay, so it's on there and you can actually see the teeth. Can you see them? I can see them. All right, see the teeth? Now we're gonna drop the stud in there, okay? And what makes this really cool is the circle, the well is the exact size of the snaps. That's why it works so well, as long as you have everything lined up. Then the third piece goes on top and this plug will go over the top of the stud and the anchor holds it all in place. Now you just hit it, okay. Take it apart. Okay, and then I always look at it to make sure that it's flush with the fabric. Because sometimes you'll see air through there all the way through. And that is because you didn't hit it hard enough or something. Something was amiss. So put it all back in there. You know, drop it back in there. Second piece on top. Then this one. If your table is, plastic tables don't work very well because they bounce. And that's nine times out of ten, that's what the problem is the table you're using isn't sturdy enough. So you can always go to the leg on one of those tables and then hit it, lay it on the, uh, the leg and that's solid, okay? Okay. Now, there's different kinds of um, snap setters. Well, this is its actual name is snap setter, but those crimpy ones that you crimp, the reason they don't work very well is you can't get enough leverage to make everything seal to the fabric and you always see air through there and eventually they'll come apart. Okay, so now we're gonna do the top. This time we're actually going to cover that little black dot and then pop the teeth through. You're going through three layers. It's gonna be a little bit harder. Okay, and there was only two on the other one. Lay that into your well, hold it in place, okay? And this can pop out really easy too, so you gotta hold that nice and tight. Put the second piece on top we're not using this one right now. And then we have to put a piece in here. So this is the socket. Okay, the socket is rocky on one side, it bulges out, and on the other side it's flat. Well, you want to put the bulge down. And it does say that on the direction, so don't lose your paperwork, it's very important. Because if you forget, you can go watch this again, mm -hmm. or you can read the instructions. Okay, you're gonna rock it into that little well. Okay, cover it up with the plug, one more time. Hit it. And that usually only takes one. Okay. Then, and you can check that to make sure. That rarely, I don't think I've ever had it not work, but what happens if you don't have it in the well and it gets off a little bit, the teeth will pop out around the outside mm -hmm. uh, because you didn't have it in the well. Or you moved it, or it can't, and, that's, and it comes out. So, okay, so now I always snap it, try it a couple of times. I've actually given these away and got a phone call that uh, they fell apart. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, sorry, Kathy. Okay, so then that one's done. Whew. And we just go on to the next one. Okay, any questions on this? Yes, directional cutting. I, I need more. Okay, directional okay, cutting. One more time. All right. Here. Show me a lemur. A lemur. <laughs> well, the lemur's going to lose his tail. I can tell you that right now, but... It's the only thing, or I could actually cut out one of these. No, I'll do a lemur. I'll do it. I'll do him. He'll be fine. We'll have a, okay, open it up. I mean, I seriously, I cut him out multiple times, <laughs> swore I was doing it right, and you, still repeated it three times the wrong way. You really, well, when you first start, when you first start doing this, it is, it is weird. It's really weird. So uh, instead of doing it towards me, I actually do it away from me when I'm doing the, when I'm trying to do the, the uh, directional. And, because I want to make sure that that's my flap and it's upside down. So it's up. Uh, the, um, the one down? Oh, yes, yes. Since I can see him. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, we'll probably lose our little, you, actually, you could have one going whichever direction you want him to go. That's the outside? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
It's counterintuitive, isn't it? Yes, I need to. Hence why I made okay. so many mistakes. <laughs> All right, so, but the inside was correct. <laughs> yeah, the inside was awesome. Okay, so I'm going to be frugal. And again, right about here is where that flap's going to, you can see this about where that's going to, um, that's about how much space you have. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lose this tail, but that's okay. Some of you might think it's a raccoon. It's all right. Okay, so that's where I'm going to cut it. Okay, I'm going to attempt this on this. That's why she wanted me to do it, see if I could not cut the template. Okay. <laughs> all right, so very carefully. And you like using a big rotor cutter for this? I do. I just, uh, oh, Val asked me if I liked using a big rotary cutter. I'm going to get through this and do those questions correctly this time. Okay. Uh, I've just always used the big ones. So, okay. yeah, I feel pretty confident with the big rotary cutter. I so. just always find the bigger cutter when I'm trying to do something curved like that. It's a little bit harder to okay, manipulate. Well, all right. Now, Val was saying and some other of our guests were saying that they have a, it's a difficult to use the big rotary cutter. Okay. The reason it's easy for me is because I do the kits here at the store, and I cut with this all the time. I will cut 10 layers with it, and there we go. Voila. And he's, he's correct. So if you make a mistake and he's going the wrong direction, that's your inside, okay? So you have two chances to get it right. So, yeah, and I still. <laughs> and uh, that's why when I started, when I made this pattern, I never made it with directional fabric. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. I'm like, I don't want to. But I that. love directional. Okay, here's another one of my favorite. These are the kind of ones that I love, like the mountains. Oh, so when you're looking at fabric, just because it's the overall, you may not think that you'll be able to use it for a wallet. I mean, I look at fabric way different when I'm thinking about wallets because I do fussy cut this and it leaves some weird spaces in there, but you know, sometimes it's just worth it. I can usually get 16 out of a yard. Okay, so this is the inside of the lemur. 16 wallets out of a yard of power? Yes, um, a yard for the outside and the inside. Is that and fussy cut or just? Is, I'm sorry? Yes, uh, I was asked if I could get 16 out of a directional fabric like this. Yes, because there's a, the directional fabric is really tight, so you can. Something like this, not necessarily. And I have done, oh, like uh, um, NCAA fabric, college fabric. That, not so much. Although, I can if I don't mind the inside being sideways. And, I mean, it's, who cares, right? <laughs> so, so, yeah, then I can actually get... I can, I can, uh, but then you have to have that second piece of fabric. For your pocket. Yeah, so that's three quarters. Okay, but I got this down. I mean, I have been doing this a long time. So there's the inside and the outside. One should be upside down and one should be right side up. That is the way you can remember it too. That's one should be upside go. down, one should be right side up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, look at I just learned something. Whoa. Of course, I don't need that, I already know, but hey, okay. <laughs> So there, I fussy cut a lemur. <laughs> and then what, oh, I do have something else I want to talk to you about. So this is doing it out of cotton fabric. And yes, you can do them out of, um, oh, like a, uh, like linen or uh, you can do linen. You can do, someone asked me if they could do leather. Well, sure. But these guys, the teeth on these, that is the longest that we can find. It won't go, it's not long enough for leather. But we do have another product here called, what is this stuff? This is Craftex, thank you. So this is Craftex, and it is, if you're familiar with the label on Levi jeans, that's exactly what Craftex is. So you can wash it, you can dry it, you can do whatever you want with it, and it works great. So here are some little wallets that are made out of it. What's really cool about this, I don't know if you noticed, but this particular wallet had one seam. That one seam where you sewed everything together and then the top stitch. But I'll consider that a seam, okay? These guys, not only do they only have one seam, but they only have one piece of fabric for everything, okay? So we have it cut up in smaller pieces, and I'm actually gonna cut one right now. Each one of these will do a wallet, if you want your wallet to be the same color. 
But I don't want my wallet to be all the same color. I want it to be two colors, so I'm going to get two wallets out of this. You're going for duck colors? Okay, I knew somebody was going to say that. You can ask Becky. I said, someone's going to say something about duck colors. I'm sorry, there wasn't orange and black. <laughs> so, so uh, I used an 80. Oh, I was asked, what size needle do I use to sew through the, t the uh, craft text? 80 or 90? Either one works fine. You don't need a jean needle. Okay. It, no, you don't. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. Yes, I know I'm not using the right template, but... Okay. I'm going to show you how you can get two wallets out of one piece. Well, one wallet out of one piece. Okay. So we're just going to cut this. Now, I, you know, I don't know if I had what I had done to figure this out, but the second, to get the pockets, okay, I don't have, all right, here we go. I don't have a ruler with me, so this is what I'm going to do. I'll make it do. Voila. Okay. All right, so I think if I measure this, the first Pocket number one is two and a half inches. Pocket number three is three inches. And pocket number two. Pocket one is two and a half. Pocket two is three inches. Pocket three is three and a half. And if you remember that, I'll give you a free wallet. Okay. All right. So, and do I want this to be the outside? And this, okay. What, do I want a green wallet or a yellow wallet? Yellow. Yellow. Okay. Well, I'm going to have one of each, I guess, huh? Okay. So oh, that's right, because your pockets are now your... Oh. Yeah, so the middle pocket of this one's going to be green. The middle pocket of this one would be yellow. So I'm going to cut the, the first and third pocket out of this. Well, actually, I'm going to cut one of each. I'm going to need them anyway. So two and a half for the first one. Again, I have no ruler, so we will eyeball it. Okay. And then three inches. Patty Little says two and a half, three and three and a half. Who? Patty Little. The, thank you. Pat, <laughs> okay, Patty Little, uh, an old sister person who's not here any longer. Uh, she's under quarantine down in California. <laughs> said. Her a duck wallet. Yeah. yeah, is that what she said? Okay. No, that's oh. what I say. Okay. Okay, Patty Little is a, used to live with sisters, now she's back down in California. And she is a duck fan, so she will be getting herself. I'll send her this one. Okay. Perfect. So. Made just for you, Patty. Made just for you, Patty. Okay. All right. So I have these three pieces now, and then I will go do. Oh, I, yeah. Let me get these ones done first, really quick. And the other one will be a sample. Um, okay, Patty, since you're watching, would you like the green one or the yellow one? see what she says okay so we'll get this done really quick and I okay there is one there is one flip that over it has a print on it so we're looking at these wallets and Valerie had mentioned that because you can print on this uh, craft text and you can actually print some really cool stuff on your wallets Okay, now back to this. Two and a half. Patty says green, please. Of course. Patty said she'd like a green wallet. <laughs> so there'll be, a, I think I just dribbled on my, my shield. I gotta tell you guys, after the, first, uh, after the first demo I did, the next day I went to get my shield and I thought somebody messed my shield up. It was filthy, the inside of it, but it was me. It was all. <laughs> So it obviously catches what it's supposed to catch. I was shocked. Shocked, I tell you. And then I actually, I was putting lotion on and I tried to put lotion on my nose and <laughs> lotion all over it. It was... Um, I tried to keep a joint. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh, aren't we all on such learning curves? I tell you, if there was cameras around here, the blooper reel would be phenomenal. <laughs> Okay, so here's our outside. Here's our third. Okay, I need to cut these first. So one. Doesn't matter what size they are. They're going to be fine. 
Okay, so this is, again, I'm going to lay this right on top here. I'm going to cut all three at the same time. Yeah, you rebel. Yep. That's when it's nice to have this guy. Okay, line those up. Oh, you know what I should have done? Ugh, I'll do it on the other one. This is the store sample, so it won't matter. Okay. Okay, well, Patty does matter. Okay, so then you just lay it on here like this, and you just top stitch it. That is it. And I would go all the way around yeah. because it just gives it a yeah. nice finish to it. Yeah. That is it. And then you put a little That's snap. Funny. Okay. Now you might actually, did I make this a little, no, I didn't, because there's no seam allowance in here, so it's actually a bigger wallet. Mm -hmm. So the, it's a quarter inch bigger. You could actually, at this point, make it a quarter inch smaller if you want. But there's that one. Yeah, you'd have to have a new template for that. Or be very, very good at cutting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> a new template or very good at cutting. Okay, so here's Miss Patty's. This goes down here like so. Flip the whole thing over. And then you put the snap on the exact same way we did on the other ones. So, for 10 bucks, I got two wallets with very little effort on my part. Okay? Yeah. Uh, now, just to let oh you know. Oh my God, those are so duck wallets, too. <laughs> Maybe, do you have a stamp? Do, yeah. do you have a stamp that we can stamp a duck on here? Yeah. Or better yet, stack a beaver on it? Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Inside the yeah, there you go. In, inside. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell them what this material is again. This, okay, Val wanted to know, I think we have somebody out there who'd like to know what this fabric is. It's, it's a craft text. It's the same fabric. It is, it's a fiber that is mushed together, and it's the, what, you, what they use for Levi Strauss's for their, mm -hmm. their labels on their pants. Okay? And we do have them cut in smaller pieces, so each small piece will do one wallet, they're five dollars. They're in the basket. They are all online. So this we've got. Are the little pieces online? Yes. Or the big, uh, the uh, Valley, Valerie asked me if the little pieces were online. Yes, they are. The little pieces are online. So you can do your your own wallets. You know, um, five bucks a wallet, not bad. And it's a great thing to put gift cards in. If you're instead of buying a card, make a wallet. It's the same price. And then they got something they can use over and over and over again. I use mine when I go, if, I'm, if we were doing quilt show today, I would be walking around out there with my little wallet and nothing else. A water bottle. Water bottle. <laughs> or if I go to a game or something, I don't want to take my purse. So I just take my wallet and stick it in my pocket. And off I go. And, you know, nowadays they check everything. So I can put everything in my wallet and go away. Any other questions? Eddie, anything? Anything? Okay. Ask where they could get the pattern. Well, um, Valerie asked me where we could get the pattern. The pattern is available online also. You can do it, uh, you can get the, we'll send you one, or you can do the PDF download if you, um, I like to have my own little, I like to have the hard one. <laughs> so, but that's me. But, so there's two different ways you can get that. And, well, then you, uh, you'd be very happy. She likes the PDF. Um, again, all the kits are online. Some of the other products that I used that I really like, and I didn't really use them today because I didn't have to cut anything, but Kai scissors, these are fabulous. So if you're cutting, if you're trimming your wallet down, you can just, oh, they're so sharp. You don't need, this is where I can make a mistake and cut my corner off, which I do occasionally. But see, scissors just slice right through that. And that is Two, four, six, eight, nine layers. Wow. That's nine layers of fabric that they're slicing, slicing through. So I love these scissors. And we were using the wool mat. I don't know if you've ever used these, but these are phenomenal. They're really, really awesome. I don't recommend using them on your cutting board, your cutting mat, because it'll warp it because uh, it gets hot. That's the whole idea is to hold the heat. So you'll want to put it off on the table. It's fine on the tables. You know, I probably wouldn't use it on a hardwood table because... Again, the, the heat can go through. But, uh, yeah, I love those. The, uh, okay, how do I say this iron? Oliso. The Oliso iron. I use the little pink one, which we are out of right now, but we can order them, but we do have yellow ones in stock at this point. So, all kinds of sizes on the little wool mat. And that, that's that, our kits.
Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Val, for letting us do this this week.